After seeing the initial AEW game reveal where everyone looked like they had dwarfism, then the huge gap of no news, then behind the scenes rumblings of Kenny Omega and the development team having issues, then trademark issues, then ESRB issues, then over budget issues, and then the game just looking overall mediocre. I went into AEW Fight Forever ready to completely despise this game and write it off as another crappy wrestling game in a sea of crappy wrestling games. But when I played it, I realized that AEW Fight Forever is not bad. It surprised me. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely not great or anything. But the potential to be great is a forbidden door that they very much could break through. Fight Forever is No Mercy inspired, and that much is obvious. Even the layout of the menus. All that's missing is the dig diggity dogs. When you head on into a match, you see that the actual game looks, uh, not good. Why do they have my man looking like the box my Nike shoes came in? I mean, I've heard of barrel chested, but never box chested. It's not as bad looking as it does in compressed YouTube footage, but it's still not good looking, especially in road to elite mode, but I'll save that for when we get there. The game isn't aiming for simulation like 2K, but there are plenty of titles that don't aim for realism but look just fine due to a good art style. Fight Forever just doesn't have that. I'm not going to say the tired old cliche that this looks like a PS3 game, but looking at TNA Impact from 2008, it's not all that far off. And it's more than fair to say that the gameplay is more important. But when your game is $60, it's reasonable to expect this to look the part as well as play the part. But we're all gameplay first here, and these controllers in our hands do more than just pilot submarines. This is where that potential I mentioned comes in. The game emulates No Mercy to a T. Strong and light grapples, a momentum system that has you max it out in order to use signatures and finishers, and a simple control scheme that's pick up and play. I can't imagine anyone who plays and loves the original Aki games, like myself, would have any problems with the core gameplay here. Matches are even faster paced than the older games, which admittedly could be a little slow at times. I feel like they executed this system really well, but it's been 20 some odd years. Damn, I'm old. What did they add that was new? Well, weapons are some of the wackiest shit I've seen in a wrestling game, and I love it. Throwing exploding propane tanks? I don't know if I should make a reference to King of the Hill or Uncharted. Pizza boxes, tires, a freaking football, an electric barbed wire baseball bat from Dead Island, a lacrosse stick, thumbtacks, and steel chairs. You know the weapons are crazy when the steel chair is the least interesting one. But there's one weapon that transforms this game from AEW Fight Forever to AEW Pro Skater. We can ride a skateboard here. I thought the peak of wrestling games would never be reached, but here we are. My favorite besides the skateboard would have to be the thumbtacks, which make you bleed. And there's more blood in this game than the streets of Detroit. I can't describe the satisfaction of slamming someone on these things. It doesn't just stop with the weapons. Doing corner dives, especially combined with the skateboard, is just pure fun. You could stand on the guardrail and jump off of it. 
You can break the guardrail. You can break the screen on the stage. The best way to describe AEW Fight Forever's gameplay is no mercy, but on steroids. Having said that, you probably think that I think this is the greatest, if not one of the greatest wrestling games ever. I've only talked about the good, but not the bad. This game is developed by Ukes. Unfortunately, Ukes and no glitches work about as well as Taco Bell and not having a bathroom within a mile. You have the AI staring at each other, guys floating, and there was that time that Kenny Omega was petrified of me. The opponent AI is just dumb and annoying. They don't understand that certain weapons like the wet floor sign only have one use. They keep doing the ordinary attack with it, which does nothing. They constantly throw you in the ring over and over again, and they keep pinning you after every move if your health is low. And that's a perfect segue into the fact that in this day and age, we still have mechanics in modern games that require you to button mash. Why do you have to do this archaic shit? At some point, you have to realize that not every single thing from these AKI games needs to be replicated. And because of this, matches end really fast. I beat people online before the explosion in the exploding barbed wire match could even explode. Don't you love it when matches end off a simple strike? The controls can take some time to get used to, mostly running. Not only does it look silly as hell, you have this weird startup delay to the run and you can only run in a straight line. Why? Because No Mercy did it almost 25 years ago, even though there are better, more modern day alternatives to this kind of stuff. While I have fun with the weapons, I can't help but be disappointed that they don't have physics. They're just there, becoming transparent and untransparent until you pick them up. They're also only limited to two strikes before they're done. Why? You can only set them up towards whoever you're facing and they fall down so easily. Good luck trying to set up a spot with them. Hit detection is hit and miss. Like, look at this. This is number one bullshit. When in multi-man matches, it's difficult to tell who you're currently facing. Your head just does this little tilt towards your opponent. But if they're grouped up, it's hard to tell. And I think if you're relatively far away, you can't look at that person. Overall, I really like the gameplay of this game, but the things that hold it back are the usual faults in Ukes games that we're all accustomed to at this point, and the fact that they're carrying over aspects of No Mercy that haven't aged all that well. Fight Forever only has nine match types. The match types here all executed well. The exploding barbed wire match is gruesome and a ton of fun. Few things are better than hitting Black Mass into barbed wire. The other matches are done pretty well too, my one gripe would be that there's not enough of them. You can't even combine them. For instance, you have three ways and four ways and a ladder match, but you can't have a three way or four way ladder match. Why? Now this game adds in all these goofball mini games. Calling these discount Mario Party mini games would be an insult to Mario Party. Like this is the kind of shit you'd find in one of those 100 great minigame collections you'd find on a Wii 15 years ago. None of them are really all that fun, and the few that are are worth like two to three plays at the very most. I don't know why resources were wasted on this. Not even the AI knows what to do. Look at Brian Danielson ride into the explosive wall over and over and over again. We could have had more match types or backstage areas or another game mode or literally anything else. If you preferred these mini games over anything I just said, my consultant Cole Phelps would like a word with you. It's even being reported that the developers prioritize these mini games over something like community creations. If that's true, then what the fuck? Creation is in this game and it's very limited. Even I, who was pretty basic with creating things in games, felt very limited. 
The highlight of creating for me is always building move sets. And there's a decent mix of moves to choose from and they all look pretty good. But the thing is, you can't sort by what move it is. So I just want to look at front grapples, but I can't look at front grapples. I have to scroll through all the moves that are like junk moves. Like, like, oh man, I really want to give my guy a freaking arm rake as a finisher. Like, come on, let me get to the better moves. And the same goes for arena creation. It's just very limited. I expect more to get added in a sequel because it's asking a lot for this game to be as expansive as a 2K game. Though the lack of any way to share creations online is really disappointing. You have to dust off the old CAW formula websites like it's the year 2000. The big game mode is Road to the Elite. It's a story slash career mode where you take control of anyone on the roster and complete this uh, story, I guess. You take part in storyline angles that have no continuity with each other. There's hardly any voiceover besides the occasional commentator. And overall, these stories just suck ass. The first one I did was I teamed with Christian and there's this theme of my luggage disappearing. We win the tag titles and after that, Christian reveals that he was the one that was taking my luggage as a joke. And then I super kick him and that's the story. What? Here was the final ending cutscene in my story. Like, man, I've seen vines that last longer than this ending cutscene. In between matches, you can do these little side activities like eating, sightseeing, press conferences, and training. Now you're traveling from place to place, so each sightseeing opportunity and dining experience is met with places and foods that are local to that area. Like if you're in Chicago, you'll head to a baseball stadium that's not Wrigley and you'll get a pie that's not pizza despite it being called pizza. Now these little side areas are super ugly. They just throw the wrestlers in front of a damn JPEG image and call it a day. I can't tell you how bad this looks with words. Like, damn man, outside is looking like a 144p YouTube video. What's up with that? The worst thing is, is that you run into other wrestlers while doing these things, and you ask them to take pictures with you like a damn mark in front of these Google image results. The biggest highlight of this mode is the dialogue you get in some of these side activities, from fourth wall breaks to other references. And of course, the core gameplay is fun, but it's really baffling what they did here overall. And the mode can be beat in a couple of hours, though to be fair, there are multiple different Shadow the Hedgehog-esque paths you can take to get new endings. Online is here and I've seen people struggle with it, but I haven't had much problems with it. Well, not all that much anyway. Here's a tip, just play exploding barbed wire match or a regular singles match because anything else you pick will just be met with your opponent running away the whole time. Don't fucking run away from me! Also, I can go on about the balancing issues like the fact that block breakers and super armor seems OP as all hell, but it's a wrestling game. I really don't take that stuff as serious as others. The most annoying thing would have to be the fact that your opponent quits. The match isn't counted. So someone could just theoretically just quit over and over and over again and maintain a good record. One. What a piece of shit. But if you're just looking to mess around with friends, I don't see why you can't do that here. AEW Fight Forever is in a good place in terms of having a great foundation to work upon for future releases. And that's okay. Look at Aki's first wrestling game. Look at the early Ukes titles. None of these were anything special, but those first titles led them to create better games. And I expect the next game to be great. They're not doing yearly releases, so who knows when we'll see the next game. Use that time to put together something great. However, if we look at AEW Fight Forever in a vacuum, it's not good. The solid gameplay can't hide the fact that this game looks mediocre has a lack of presentation, has a bunch of useless minigames, story mode is nothing special, small amount of match types, limited creation suite, and a solid but basic online component. You can't hide behind the whole, oh, it's no mercy, it's supposed to be like that, excuse for all of these issues, especially considering that this game is $60, only 10 more dollars away from being full price. This feels like a budgeted title, not a $60 game. But hey, 
at least you can have fun trolling with Orange Cassidy in this game. He's so cool. 